it's kind of known <laughs> if that makes sense like audio loom would body everybody with t twin fang combo decks he was like the Rico Rex of this game. He was just a specialist on one specific type of deck and nobody else could play it like him. Is it weird that I hate fan club a little bit more than Seraphine? Oh yeah, fan club president is um, way more obnoxious than Seraphine, I think. Because getting a two mana spell from outside of your regions is, you know, tolerable. But getting a five mana spell from outside of your regions... And also discounting it, I think, has way more of a high variance, really salt inducing impact on the game. Twin Fang is good, but it needs some setup, so I don't think it's overly broken. I think that that Twin Fang is broken. <laughs> I think that because clearing your opponent's like clearing your opponent's board becomes a punish is what makes it broken. Because you get access to, like, really powerful mechanics that your region shouldn't have access to, right? Like, Harsh Winds and Siphoning Strike. It's just a mess. Turn one, do nothing. This is an interesting gambit. Okay, I kind of like this. I like this greedy line. Borean Bear is a threat versus this central tile if Starhorn walks forward to develop because of Bone Shield Barrier. And Snow Chaser... Um, potentially gets to walk into infiltrate range if my opponent doesn't also come down here to take the risk against Borean Bear. Why not just play out your entire hand? Don't need to. I need to save my Bone Chill Barrier to combo and threaten with Borean Bear and potentially to combo with Glacial Elemental. This deck isn't uh, isn't very aggressive. I think is basically the best way to put it. So now we can put our Snow Chaser into Infiltrate range. Um, and then, hmm. Leaving the mana open is super greedy. But I don't think I actually mind it too much. Do I even want Bone Chill Barrier? No. I think you could go for a line there, though, Grio, to uh, just, like, Bone Chill Barrier, and then Borean Bear and Snow Chaser. And then Bear kind of gets a lot of threat potential by being uh, boosted from turn two and is protected from natural selection. Both lines are good. Both lines are definitely good. I just tend to underplay versus Magmar and play a more reactive style. Yo, what's up, Ikikomori? Mobius! Bruh. Have you played Marvel Snap yet? No, I actually kind of missed the boat on it. I was really excited when it was first announced, but then after I got, you know, by the time that I got invited to the beta, I was just way too busy to try it, and then I just never kept up with it. Yeah, they changed Bear so that it scales with Walls, not Vespers. This is a little bit problematic. We've got really good damage here in Tempo. I might go for the tempo, especially with Razorback. Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, let's uh, let's tempo tempo. We can even play Razorback here to protect our Fenrir Warmaster. Lamau replacing last, by the way. <laughs> it's Morphin time. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if it was better to maybe play Razorback down here. Let them have this trade. Then we keep a 4-3 body to keep this Corral going. Because now they have to trade here into the Femur Warmaster. And I still get a 3-3, three, three, so it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You hit me? They still have 5 mana open. They gotta have something here. Blood tier? Gotta be blood tier then, right? Flash McCanter? Lined up for a warbird? Oh my god, that cat. So rude. I've- Listen, 
playing Duelist 2 and not having to worry about Rippers and, and uh, Warbird and Heart Seekers is just a joy. Oh! Colossus. Damn, they really played Dr. Seuss on me. Okay. I feel like there's almost a lethal here. I would need Heart Sister Aspect of the Fox for it to be lethal. So we can use Aspect of the Mountain to deal 5 in an AoE. I guess we'll replace the Borean Bear. Or the Snow Chaser, rather. Aspect of the Fox. Ah, oh, just a little bit off. Okay, fine. Okay. Twelve damage, Magmar, and an empty board. This opens up natural selection to kill the seismic or egg morph. So what aspect of the mountain does is it transforms a unit into a five five, and then it deals five damage uh, to enemies in an AOE around itself. So what we did was is we punched with our five one, and then when that dies, it left a three three behind the Femoral Warmaster, and we turned that three three into the elemental. To uh, and then that plus the snow chaser finished off the Colossus because it has seven HP. And if you don't kill it, it gets plus four plus four at the start of the turn. And I didn't have enough mana as well for you know just aspect of the fox to transform the Colossus. I could have done aspect of the fox, hit with the five one. Then I have a three three behind. Hmm. Ooh. Strong play. Strong play. Replace a Draugr Lord. Gravity Well. Hmm. So I can do Aspect of the Fox to turn this into a 3-3. Glacial Elemental, Bo Borean Bear. Borean Bear sends two damage here so I can clear that. And then the 5-5 opens a path to victory. Um, no. There haven't been any balance changes since the last network test. In Duelist, you get blown out of the water by the stuff that you aren't anticipating. This Draugr Lord won't leave me alone. Hopefully, I'll be able to play it eventually. This game is big brain. After playing, like, other games, it, you kind of get taken by surprise at how hard Duelist is. It's always been that way. Oh, God. Turn one, Kujata. Bleh. I could go for the turtle opening with gl uh, Glacial Elemental. Cryo? Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, I've got to Cryo that. Because they can ramp and then play. They can ramp, walk forward, play, and then they eat all the mana with the discount from Kujata. And then I just can't keep up. Yo, we got the sub from KVL. Thank you and welcome to the Knighthood, KVL. One thing as well for Duelist that we get to re-implement is uh, viewer replay reviews. Where, because we have match replays, if there was a game that you think was, like, really close or you want me to analyze for you or even just cast it, like, tournament style, esports style, we can do that. And it's a great way for you to, like, you know, figure out the game and teach yourself. So, we've got Glacial Elemental into Crystal Cloaker. This is a very risky play. Because of, they walk up into Flash McCanter. So, I'm actually going to summon the Crystal Cloaker here to play around that specific play. The thing about McCanter War Beast is that you can't minimize its impact. Oh, they don't have to walk up for it. They're they're just on four. The you can't like you can't stop War Beast. You can only minimize its impact. When you play units diagonally like this, my opponent has to make the choice of okay, I use McCanter War Beast to kill these two, or I use McCanter War Beast to kill these two. Right? They don't. If I played my Crystal Cloaker over here to get its infiltrate bonus, the McCanter War Beast hits all three. So now I'm forcing my opponent to make a choice. I've been advocating for match replays in Legends of Runeterra literally since day zero. It's always been at the top of my priority list for them to implement. Because it serves every single aspect of the player base. 
Got another Glacial Elemental. Glacial Elemental Bone Chill just to deal two to the Elucidator does feel a little bit whack. But at the same time, I can wall my opponent away from taking this Mana Tile. And then I have Razorback as a follow-up. We only get mopped by Plasma Storm. Maybe it's not worth it. Because I can just play War Master and run away from this. I think I think I want to chill just because the the uh plasma storm is a bit rough for me. Yeah, I've got to play War Master here to prevent walking up to that tile to get McCanter. And then we just walk away from the Elucidator. Good thing they spent a year on Path of Champions and completely disregarded everything else. Yeah, the Path of Champions, very, very cool idea. I'm glad they got it into as fleshed out as the state that it's currently in, but really hoping that we've got match replays in the chamber. I really pray. There was also that meeting as well that we were going to have the round table about the future of competitive play and some changes to the format and all that that was actually postponed. So we're waiting to hear a little bit more information about that. And so this is a little bit, this is a bit of an odd line. I'm decently close to my minions. If my opponent like moves too forward, maybe plays like a provoke like back here to shield these minions away from me and just moves the elucidator forward, I'm getting kind of corralled down into this corner. So there are punishes to this line for me trying to avoid the elucidator. Ah, they did have flash McCanter. What do you think about Spell High with two draw? Spell High's busted. 100%. By blocking this mana tile, I, um... Uh, I force my opponent to use the Flash Reincarnation on the War Beast, which is very, very good for me. And so now what that allows me to do is play the Glacia Elemental over here in the corner. And then run this way and play Snow Chaser. which pings and finishes off the War Beast. And now if they have second War Beast, they can clear my Snow Chaser so it doesn't come back to my hand or uh, clear Glacial Elemental. I'd burn the Snow Chaser though if they kill it because I'm about to draw two cards. I could replace and maybe find something playable. Yes, indeedy, feed the needy. This makes the Mercanter War Beast way better. If I replaced first, I would have done Cloak or Snow Chaser. Ugh. Burning Snow Chaser versus giving them a better War Beast. I'll burn the Chaser. Because the only way they can kill this is with Natural Selection. Yeah, I always forget Magister to replace first. But then again, even if I had that play reversed, I'm still developing into the War Beast, which I don't like. I lose my Snow Chaser either way a lot of the time. And with Elemental alive, I get to play a much more reactive game with my uh, Vespers to just clear whatever they do. And sometimes, like, you're, you're totally, like, fine about not replacing. And then once you do your play, you realize, like, you have a realization after you've done your play, like, oh, shit, I actually, if they have this card, I get really punished. So then you replace at the end of your turn because you realize that you need a certain card to counter their counter. What game is this? This is Duelist 2 Rusbear. Please check it out on Steam. The network test is going over this weekend. Free to play. True Sight. Yo, we played around it by keeping Glacial Elemental in the corner. I'm a god. Bone Chill Barrier clears all of this. Yeah, Bone Chill Barrier uh, Crystal Cloaker clears all of this. So first things first. I want to run this way. And uh, move the Snow Chaser here. Wait, I want to play the Bone Chill Barriers first. To try to make a wall. Does it matter though? Then we move the Crystal Cloaker here. I mean the uh, Snow Chaser. And then 
The walls are always a huge detriment because of War Beast. So I'll just play the Cloaker here. Call it a day. Once again, we burn Snow Chaser if they just like Plasma Storm here. But if that if they Plasma Storm, that's their whole turn. And I get to keep Crystal Cloaker. And then once I'm on this side of the board, things become really dicey for them. And if they don't clear these walls, then we have uh, Draugr Lord too. I could have been a, a bit greedier by leaving Snow Chaser here. Oh my god. They gotta kill the Glacier Elemental. That's great. That's so good for me. Well played. So let me see. That's um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Because Draugr Lord turns my walls into ice drakes. Related cards OP, by the way. Hopefully they can somehow implement this into legacy mode. It's a lot of extra work. Let me think. How do I kill you from here? Two, four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Because this is this is gonna lose the infiltrate bonus. So it's two. Then this moves out of the way. Two, three, four, plus five. I'm like psyching myself out. That's nine. Ten. Yeah, it is lethal. It is lethal. I'm like trolling. Okay, we found it. Quick math zig strikes again. I've got to play Skarzig Brome. After this, we'll go to legacy mode to play Skarzig Brome. Ooh, double Fenrir is kind of gross. We haven't gotten a Fenrir Warmaster line yet. It's a 3-3 three, three, that when it dies, it leaves behind a 3-3. Three, three. So you just play it down and just start value trading into everything. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's Shadow Creep. Shadow Creep spotted, chat. Um, I think we actually do just play... Hmm. I think we do play this to um. try to... I've been really greedy with my openings to keep mana up, but I think we want to deny the mana to slow the game down. Hey, Skarzik, I love your videos. Aww. I can't spell, by the way. More ip loads. Ooh, Night Sorrow Assassin. Eats the first half of the wolf, which I guess is fine. These being two ones is also a little sus, but I digress. We go face, by the way. We don't. We don't actually kill these uh, abyssal crawlers. Gonna play like this to try to mitigate Grasp of Agony. Another War Master. Okay. We we have the Smork. We have the line chat. Vitruvian playing a turn behind, yeah. They were either really, really aggressive or it felt like they were constantly like hanging by a thread. We all know the vibe when you um Which one's Grasp of Agony? That's the one that when you kill a unit. It deals three damage in an AoE around itself. But we all know the, the, the way it works where you play Amara Healer and you're praying that your opponent doesn't have removal or something or else you lose. We've got Draugr Lords coming up. The good news is that I can just keep uh, bullying my opponent here. Play another War Master and then a Crystal Cloaker. We were able to beat Shadow Creep with Magmar because that deck is way more aggressive, but you can see just the raw amount of healing is a little bit rough. Hmm. This positioning's really cool. So the um cloaker can't kill the rejuvenator. 
I can Hearth Sister this to get the one for one. Bone Chill Barrier into Draugr Lord is also cool. If the if the Bone Chill Barriers survive, but that's kind of unlikely, especially with Grasp of the Undying. And it doesn't result in too much damage for me. Oh, Razorback. Okay, now we're, t now we're cooking. Basically, I'm thinking, do I want to actually kill the Emerald Rejuvenator or not, or do I just want to smash face? Nope, we're going ham. I've decided that face is the place. My opponent's not on Shadow Nova yet. They've got the trade here into Grasp of the Undying here. Grasp of, uh, Grasp of Agony. Sorry, not Grasp of the Undying. You know what I mean. Yet more healing from my opponent. And they do have it. What? Oh my god, they hit with their general? No way. I guess they had to to kill both halves of the fox. So. Four, five, six. Yeah, it's lethal. We What we do is we hearth sister. So this is important. Friendly, uh, uh, friendly units can move through one another. But uh, we can't move through enemies. So right now. You can see I'm like, this Razorback is walled off from hitting face. But if we Hearth Sister to move the um, Emerald Rejuvenator, we Hearth Sister to move the Razorback, pardon me. Because if we Hearth Sister the Emerald Rejuvenator, the same thing still happens. Well, if the Hearth Sister's here, then my General can move out of the way. So it's the same difference. But anyway, we just swap Areno, buff Areno, Smork Areno. Ending the game on turn six before Shadow Nova happens is how we win that game.